But isn't it amazing in how we can see how bringing green into inside our apartments is something that we wouldn't think possible. You can see we're currently here in the heart of London. We're here to discuss this building behind me, the Shard. Obviously one of the biggest buildings within the heart of London, also an engineering masterpiece. So the Shard extends to over 310 meters from base to top out. You see, it sits on 56 concrete piles, each roughly about 1.2 meters in diameter and drilled about 53 meters into the ground to get onto appropriate founding material. Not only did it need these piles to be able to withstand the weight, it also needed to be threaded in between the busy train lines that run underneath it. The Shard at the heart of it and how it actually stands up is literally just a giant core. It's a marvel of engineering through this concrete spine. The core acts as the main load bearing and lateral support system for the structure. The design allows each floor to be hung off the core independently, much like leaves and stems on a tree, providing both the stability, flexibility, and gravity load path. And as you can see, as it's shimmering in the light, one of the most striking features is its facade. Did you know there's over 11,000 glass panels here that cover the whole building? But they're not just on show. Each panel is angled in a specific way to maximize the daylight while minimizing heat gain. One of the major hurdles in constructing such masterpiece, it was in a densely populated area near London Bridge. So they needed to ensure safety of both the workers and public while minimizing noise levels. Coordinating delivering such a project was a logistic nightmare because where are you gonna store materials in such a tight space? Every step needed to be carefully planned out, make sure it was a dance between feasibility and ambition to build this masterpiece. In addition to shaping a building to allow for the sustainability goals, the pyramid shape was specifically designed to minimize the wind forces on it. Brilliant example of form following function. This brings us to one of the other major places, which is integral to Zuru. This is in India. So we're currently here in Calcutta, India, at the Queen Victoria Memorial. Milano is also integral to how Zuru performs, with one of the major offices being here. And being in the heart of Italy, we can look through all the masterpieces of the artisans of structural engineering, really bringing together both architecture and engineering to create masterpieces and marvels. It's no wonder that some of the greatest engineers come from Italy. So in addition to some of the older architecture, there's also unique modern architecture in the heart of Italy. You may have seen, I just went for a walk around Milan and you could see the amazing Domo di Milano. Not only is it just a church, but it's also an ingenuity of the feat of engineering and innovation back in the day. As for them to build such a magnificent piece, they needed to combine both the architecture and the engineering to make a beautiful masterpiece. So they actually had to work out how to dissipate the forces from the top of that dome as the forces tried to arch out and down the arches and struts. This is where you can see the vertical supports that brace out the structure, allowing the force to dissipate down to the ground. So I think there's going to be a little bit of a sneak peek. I'm going to go through and show you this book later, which is from my travels in London. I actually got to speak to the author. And this is an amazing book about the computational engineering published by iStruck D. For those of you who don't know who iStruck D, it's one of the gold standards of structural engineering. Not only they have their amazing resources, they also have an examination that allows you to travel around the world and there's a lot of mutual recognition to being chartered with this organization. When you look at a building like this, 
It's more than just the green facade. You think about the engineering behind it to not only support the greenery, but also the loads on it and also the durability required for having such green and aggressive environments on it. You think about the weight of each of those trees and the soil behind it. But also the trees that are really in an aggressive environment that try and attack the concrete. So you need to carefully detail not only for the load, but also the durability to ensure it withstands both the weight and the aggressive nature of having such greenery in this area. But isn't it amazing in how we can see how bringing green into side our apartments is something that we wouldn't think possible in the general concrete jungle that apartments typically are.